Lucas Zampala and welcome to her story. Our guest for today uh, was the first female engineer and after that she went on becoming one amongst the first women commissioner for anti-corruption commission and also the uh, one among the first female party president and then she went on to being the first woman minister for ministry of works and human settlement and was also granted the red scarf by his majesty the duke gebo in her recognition for her service to the country and the people in 2016 he is none other than tash tej yes uh, thank you so much for taking your time and talking to us la so uh, if you could tell us something about your your early life la or your early education your uh, family as uh, chilling thank you uh, firstly and thank you to bbs for coming up with the uh, a story called her story and i hope every story is very unique and different and i hope there is some take away from this story and i hope in my simple life uh, something uh, can uh, be there to take away by our young ones well my early childhood uh, life is rather long and quite complex i must say because uh, we are seven siblings uh, seven brothers and sisters and at very young age i was uh, i think i was about 11 years ago that my father expired la my father was a teacher la uh, yes. he, he was a language teacher in our village la kangpara i come from kangpara uh, a quite a remote uh, geo uh, then under tashigang zongkhak yes and uh, still remote la <laughs> because the road came there only a couple of years ago and my village got connected only one year ago la but now i can't say it's remote because now it's accessible by road la. so we are yes. we were seven siblings and uh, we had a rough time la my mother had to single handedly she had to bring up all our seven uh, siblings so it was uh, tough and going to my story la and among us uh, uh, all of us couldn't get education la yes. we couldn't go to school la yes. so i was the lucky one and i must uh, i must say i was very fortunate to go to school and my youngest brother he managed to go to school yes. so other than that my other siblings were, were not into formal school of course they know how to read and write our zongkha language but uh, not formal school yes. uh, so i started my primary education in my uh, geok school uh, primary yes. school for very few years la and then later i came to teaching chilling la because my mother's uh, my auntie maternal auntie's husband was a rbg officer there in uh, chilling so i studied my did my primary there for about 3 years and then yes. i went to kanglung la yes. and kanglung is a place where i finished my high school la eh las so it was uh, it was i had to go around many schools change many schools uh, even yes. at very small uh, primary level after kanglung so you went and did your engineering so what motivated you and what made yes, you yes. want to become an engineer la uh, kanglung uh, that time it was kanglung was a kanglung public school and uh, sherapti public school uh, that was one of the top school in the eastern bhutan and i must say much is to do with uh, how our uh, teachers motivated you and how our education policy and education system really encourage the students to study hard uh, take up your career so i must give credit to the school uh, where how i could manage to do engineering and uh, come to this uh, status la uh, if you look at our parents side during those days our parents generations were not well educated many of our family members were not educated my father was of course a teacher but uh, those days you could easily get job after uh, even uh, before you complete your high school yes. all high school dropouts would normally go into stenography training teachers training nursing training and you used to get uh, yes. jobs uh, during my time yes. but somehow uh, during my schooling in uh, sherapti public school uh, i was interested in science and i used to get uh, amazed by how science works and i used to always dream that uh, i want to do something that is scientific and yes. i used to get uh, really uh, fascinated by astronauts and how people go to moon you know during those days so i believe that these are the things that uh, 
made me uh, choose a career uh, in engineering. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't uh, be able to go if I had to listen to family who wanted me to take up a job. La. Yes. So was it a scholarship? Uh, yes, yes. So after class uh, 11, 12, we had 10 plus 12. So uh, I took pure science. I took yes. both maths and uh, science. I used to do well in both science and maths. And how I became engineer, engineering is not something that was in my mind that I want to become engineer. But because I was uh, interested in science and I used to get uh, very, uh, you know, uh, I used to like science. So that's how I took up engineering. I could easily go to medical also. So there was a choice of medical versus engineering, two totally different subjects. Yes. But we had no career counseling and it's up to you. Family would give you no career counseling. And uh, even uh, other than the school teachers and your class teachers, so there was no career counseling or your future, what you want to take up. So it is purely based on your intuitive and your interest. And that's how I landed up uh, taking up engineering. Lasla, do you regret making your choice? Like you could have become a doctor, you could have become an engineer, but you chose... Not at all. <laughs> Less. Less. Not at all. I think uh, I went for engineering with a clear conscience uh, that I want to do whatever comes uh, in front and of me. And how challenging was the course, la? Courses such was not challenging. Um, course is not at all challenging. But uh, having stayed in Bhutan, raised in Bhutan, uh, during those, I'm talking about 1970s, uh, no accessibility, you come from a remote place, no exposure whatsoever, you know, beyond your country boundary. So traveling outside and getting exposed to what is outside, that was difficult. That's and uh, especially being a girl yes. and uh, traveling all out by yourself i had no other company than myself so traveling out into india a place where billions of people are there the traffic jam the noise you know and uh, attached to that is so many other you know so many other undesirable elements that risk that is risk for the young girl that was a challenge yes. but uh, reaching the college and uh, studies academically there was no challenge at all no no big deal i think uh, girls uh, girls as well as boys can uh, excel less excel but less the physical uh, physical environment the exposure th these were uh, some challenges because i had so little uh, help from my uh, family members because they were from rural uh, village yes. how can they support me you know so i was on my own so after you completed your engineering so what was your next step after you came back to bhutan so as i said uh, i it was government who selected we had to go through the selection process and then it's the government who selected me so when you come back uh, the jobs were almost guaranteed so yes. i joined uh, we used to call public works department then yes. it was under the ministry of social services so i joined there and uh, i joined there uh, my first assignment was in local sanitation project which was funded by who and uh, who and undp so i looked after one project local sanitation yes and was there any challenges at work like because you were the first female engineer and uh, because those days it was male dominated so yes, was it yes, difficult yes. La, any it is. It was totally a male-dominated uh, profession that I took during my uh, engineering course uh, during uh, the time of taking the course, and as well as after joining the service, la, PWD was all male, la, and especially at the engineering level, there were girls at the draftsmen where they uh, draw drawings. Draftsmen level, there were uh, ladies, but no ladies at the engineers level, and. The building itself was so manly, <laughs> and uh, if I can share you on small incident, yes, the toilet, yes. la, there was only one common toilet, and it was for everybody. <laughs> so yes. then we said, no, we need one toilet for ladies. It's, uh, I mean, that's it, something that uh, is necessary uh, as a privacy for ladies, you know. So it was really the, the whole environment is uh, geared towards male uh, employees. So it started with toilet, la. and uh, work, uh, in terms of working with the colleagues, uh, I did not face major uh, major issue. La. Uh, in a way, I find our Bhutanese society very receptive. La. 
But so long as you conduct yourself well, <laughs> less, less. I think a lot depends on yourself, that you are serious with your work. Yes, I'm an engineer. You are an engineer. We are all same engineers. So you don't view me as a girl, you know, or a mm -hmm. lady, but you view me as your engineer colleague, you know. Less. So I think uh, you, from your end, it, it's a two-way uh, attitude. Uh, so long as you are able to project yourself as you are a profession, and I do my job, and I do my, I mind my business. So I, I did not uh, face a major problem. But again, as I said, traveling, uh, because of the physical uh, uh, physical uh, difficulties, the privacy that, uh, special privacy that uh, a lady requires, women requires. These were some of the issues. La. So otherwise, uh, working-wise, in terms of performance, I think there is, there is no Less. difference. La. Less. So mm. there means there were no differentiation. Even more. No. So how did you feel being the first uh, female engineer? La? In fact, I don't want to even take credit that I am first <laughs> because uh, we were so small in numbers. The ladies were so small in numbers, so somehow if you take something different, everybody became first, yeah? Yes. During those days, you know, if you take up, uh, somebody went into pilot, somebody went into nursing, even somebody went into something else, I think you were uh, first because we were uh, very few then, uh, especially uh, ladies who who completed graduation and then who joined public service. So I think numbers were uh, few, so yes. it did not make me feel very proud or it did not yes. make me feel anything uh, yes. that I'm special or anything, yes. but I took, took it as uh, a normal uh, challenge, a normal yes. way of life, yeah. So um, at what age did you get married? Uh, during our time, uh, after graduation, we had something called national service yes. and we had to do it for six months. Yes. Uh, some of this has discontinued now, but I thought it was a very useful program. So I did my national service in Gelifula. Uh, they gave us that uh, place where there was a resettler's place yes. to work on a water supply project. La. So yes. we have a group of them. And I met my husband there. La. He was working with WHO uh, in Gelifu uh, Hospital. La. So that's where, because all my batchmates who were in the national service and my husband, they were all good friends. So we were working together, we were being together for almost six months. So I met my so husband. It is a love marriage. <laughs> <remember? No>. Yes, <laughs> love. Yes, yes. And what about your children? Uh, my children, so I have two children. Um, young, the elder one is a son and the younger one, daughter. So they have all finished their uh, uh, graduation and also masters. La. My yes. son has done... Uh, electrical and electronic engineering and he's working with DGPC yes. and my daughter is a doctor he yes. did from AFMC yes. he's in she's in the army and she also finished her uh, master's la. she did in medicine yes. do you have grandchildren sir? I have one la. my yes. son got married and uh, we have one little daughter <laughs> how did you feel when you became a grandmother for the first time la? oh uh, it's it's a very um, I think you feel very excited uh, and you feel enriched la. your family is enriched when you have a little one, one coming in la. because once your children grow up and then they are on their own so at one point in time you are alone and then suddenly a grandchild comes so new life comes in and it, it's, it's, it, she keeps me engaged la. you had a career and you were raising children how did you balance your career and your uh, timing um, it is difficult, I must tell you. It is difficult. Uh, although uh, in Bhutan, much easier than you see elsewhere, because I know my college friends, you know, my Indian college friends, compared to their life and my life, it's different. But uh, uh, balancing uh, work and life is not easy, especially for working women. Yes. Because uh, by tradition, uh, women have always played this uh, child care role, caring of the house, caring of the elderly. And I think women have your own innate uh, feeling that it's your concern. And then you, women become more concerned. If the children are not well, you become more concerned than the father. If there's something is not going right at home, you feel more concerned. So that concern keeps you, you know, uh, uh, keeps you tight with how to balance work and life. La. Mm. So that way, for a working woman, it becomes uh, quite difficult and you have to have a good understanding with your husbands, with your family members who are living with you. La. 
So I was lucky because my mother was there throughout la, yes. till my children were almost uh, when they reached the class uh, standard uh, five six la, she yes. was there. So I was lucky because I could go on tour any moment because my my mom was there. But it's not like that la, but it is difficult la. No. And sometimes you have to be late evening dinners, you know, and in mm. small charge, children at home. So it is difficult, but you have to have uh, understanding at uh, at the family level. What was your next job? I know you became one of the commissioner for ACC. Right, so. right. I think I worked uh, in the public works department quite for some time. I was with uh, drinking water supply and sanitation, then with uh, at the planning level, then I also started a new office called Standard and Quality Control Authority. That was a new, uh, uh, newly established office to ensure quality in our construction industry. So only after that, uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission was my almost the last uh, uh, public, uh, public uh, responsibility, uh, responsibility. So somehow, uh, it was all new. La. Uh, when you hear about anti-corruption itself uh, that time, it was not acceptable to the society at large. La. Why? You know, why anti-corruption uh, commission? And uh, I knew so little also. La. When I was uh, nominated as one of the commissioners, I got a shock in my life also. Nice. I never knew that I was one of the commissioners. So all questions, you know, why anti-corruption, <laughs> why anti-corruption commission in nice. Bhutan? But it is a, if you now hindsight, if you think about it, it is really His Majesty, the fourth king's long-term vision of uh, transiting into a democracy, a democratically elected government, you know. Yes. So this was a preparation towards that, that to ensure that uh, the moment you go into this democratically elected uh, government, I think uh, corruption is a, is a biggest issue, I think, uh, all over the world. So to ensure that you have an institution in place. So it was uh, long-term thinking. But uh, till then, I think society did not believe that we had corruption. Yes. But so small corruptions are, uh, were there. But people thought it is part of your uh, uh, job and part of, uh, part of the way you conduct your business. Yes. But now it's becoming more and more aware. Next step was joining politics. So why <laughs> did you decide to join politics? Uh, politics was another uh, big turning point for me. Um, and uh, initially, it was never in my mind. La. It was never in my mind. And the way I work, my nature, I'm not for politics. Now, when you say that people do criticize, then what is for politics? You know, what kind of person is for politics. Uh, because politic, uh, politics is something that people have portrayed it as something very different. La. And uh, of course, Bhutan, we, we are having experience now. But uh, before that, uh, during our monarch's time, we used to hear, we used to see news when we opened up uh, for this, uh, opened up our IT uh, and TV and everything. You could see how politics run in other countries. La. And you don't get anything good from there, mm -hmm. do you? No, mm -hmm. Not at all. Yeah, You always portray politicians as somebody uh, who can talk a lot, you know, who can tell lies uh, you know, blatantly and do nothing. You, know. you can promise a lot but do nothing. But you should be able to, you are able to brush it up with your, you know, the speaking power. And a lot of corruption is there. So it is portrayed like that. La. And then a lot of uh, character defamation going on. So politics was never portrayed as something very noble and yes. something very good. Yeah. So I had that that kind of uh, uh, thinking also in my mind. So when this uh, transition, uh, transformation of our government from uh, constitutional monarchy to uh, democratically elected uh, system of government, it was something that. Uh, we were, I, I couldn't believe that we are, we are going through that kind of change so fast, but it did come and um, I was never for it and I never volunteered to do it, but some of my friends and colleagues who were joining there and forming a party, so each one nagged at each other, let's join. Yes. So this is how I went into politics. La. Yes. And I also, second thought, I thought, now what is there in civil service? I've served for 22 years. La. Yes. When I resigned, I served for... 
22 years in. Then I said, okay, let's try. Let's. I think we can make politics different for Bhutan. Yes. Uh, Bhutan has uh, pioneered and championed many things. Yes. Environment, you know. Under our great monarchs, we have championed in uh, maintaining our environment, uh, carbon neutral, our culture, rich culture, uh, our way of life. I think we have uh, so many things that we have been able to preserve and maintain and championed uh, globally. Yes. And uh, gross national happiness is something, you know, the, as a uh, development paradigm we have championed so well. Why not politics, you know? Yes. So all our friends, uh, the colleagues that I looked at, well, they were all my colleagues, you know, some in the government service, some in the private. So we, we said, then why not? Let's serve people from a different platform. Yes. So let's yes. take it as public service from a different platform. Yes. Just now we are in the civil service, so politics is an, another platform to serve the nation and the people. Yes. So that's how I joined politics. Yes. But not if, if that is to that has to compare with my nature and my character and what you, what other politicians were totally different. <laughs> <laughs> and was it difficult when you were going campaigning? Oh, very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Any, uh, very difficult. Uh, I did not know that Bhutan would start on that kind of footing. Mm. Ooh, it, is, it, is, it is difficult. And I think it has also to do with our smallness. Because people know each other so well. You are somehow related, linked. You know each other. Mm. So then it is really taken at the personal level. So uh, that becomes difficult. Less, yeah. And then the system itself uh, makes you, you know, because you, are, you want votes. Yeah? You, want, you want big number of votes. And everybody wants big number of votes. Yeah, different political parties. So you are playing with the same voters. You know, no, I want you and the other want you. So now you have to make sure that how do you, how do you want that voter to come towards you? Less. So it, it is not, it, it can be uh, not very easy. La. You won the election in PTP. You went on becoming the first uh, woman right. minister for right. Bhutan right. for right. Ministry of Works right. and Human right. Settlement. Right. How right. was the experience la, or how did you feel? La? Mm, that was, uh, I must say, it, were, it was a big privilege. It, it came as a blessing in disguise, I thought, la, because uh, Works and Human Settlement was the organization where I started my career. La. And then coming back uh, to that uh, office uh, almost completes my circle. Yes. And I was very glad because uh, I thought I know something because uh, my background is also engineering and I work there. I have some experience. Of course, there are so many young engineers uh, are there, all coming up with uh, up-to-date knowledge of what's happening today. But still, I thought I have, uh, I also have something to contribute in that. and. I was very, very happy la, that uh, I was able to get that portfolio. La. Less, la. So uh, Ministry of uh, Works and Human Settlement was yes, something la. that was very close to your heart. Yes, yes. So uh, what do you think empowers a woman? What, what are some of the things, you know, empowers women, la, according to you? Uh, I think education. La. I must say education. You have to have good education. So when I talk about education, it's not only about passing an examination, la passing an examination of class 10 or class 12, but good education, education that you, that you are able to know what is healthy, what is environment, uh, good education about values, you know, good education about, uh, uh, about so many other things. La. Sometimes we relate education to examination. La. So to me, good education. La. And that uh, prepares uh, anybody and more so women. La. Yes. That can prepare you to be, uh, to be more sustainable, to be able to stand on your own feet, to make your own livelihood, uh, so that you are economically empowered. So if you have good education, you can be economically empowered. You can also be socially empowered. So many things can happen through education. Yes. Because good education can give you good understanding of life, good understanding of relationship. Sometimes we, we, when we talk about this women's empowerment, we think that you know, now I have the power and I'm going to wage war with my husband or I'm, I want to go and wage war with my male co colleagues. I think this is not. La. I think you have to understand the relation, even if, if it is husband-wife relationship. Each one should be able to understand each other because weaknesses are there in both, you know, yes. husband, not that 
women will have no weaknesses, women will have weaknesses, has, uh, men will have weaknesses. I think it's about, so that, that is education, a good yes. education. So yes. this is what I believe in, education. Yes. You have talked about the importance of uh, education. Any other message for our viewers? La? Any tips from you? <laughs> <laughs> Any advices? Uh, my tip is that uh, all along my life, la, my stories are very simple stories, ordinary lives. La. I have not, uh, uh, I have not, uh, what do you call, uh, I have not done something so extraordinary that people will say, wow, she has done that. You know? I've said that I'm do, I do ordinary things well and with good intention. So long as you do that, I think extraordinary things come. This is how, what I believe, la. that do your ordinary things in front of you well. La. Uh, I don't want to show to people. La. I don't like to show to people that I have done that and this is my product. You do things well and then that ordinary things will come, become something extra, extraordinary. So this is what I uh, believe and I want to tell all our viewers, both young and especially the uh, old and especially the young ones. La. I know there are out there so many young ladies, la, young girls. I have visited many schools and I know how smart our girls are. La. Many are topping their classes. There are so many smart young girls. So my only message to you is that you must make use of the edu good education that you get and do things, uh, do ordinary things well and uh, things will turn up well. La, uh, thank you so much, Tasho, for your, your time la, and uh, the very interesting stories that you had to share with us. La. And mm. uh, for our viewers, from uh, Tasho's story, I hope you realize that uh, you should never regret the choices you make and a good education prepares for all. Thank you very much for watching. Just before we wind up, let's take a look at uh, Tasho's five favorite things. Light shades, la. light shades of purple, light shades of pink, light shades of green. La. I like movies which are based on true stories and social movies. La. I love country songs and of course coming to local, I like Beja. La. But I like something that is, uh, uh, that is related to the beans. La. I love these uh, black beans, black dolls. Spiritual books, something like uh, Restful Mind Law, and which uh, teaches you how, how to tame yourself, how to tame your life. So, spiritual, and then also biography. I like reading biography. I like to be down to earth, and I try to do that. <laughs> um, but of course, I haven't been able to do it. Before I used to do tailoring, I like to do my own cutting, a bit of tailoring I like, and I also like uh, cooking and baking. La.